G'day guys, Aaron here again. This is episode four in the conversion series of turning my sup into a sale sup. And the first thing I need to do is glue the deck down. So let's get to it. In this first part of this episode, what I wanted to show you guys is how I get ready to fiberglass. And for that, I get myself set up. It means I have my workbench, I have my clamps ready, and you'll see that I stuck some plastic on some timber battens, and they'll be used for clamping later. And I really take my time when I do my measurements of my epoxy. I don't want to get that wrong at all. So I use my bag technique, put all the epoxy into a Ziploc bag, cut the corner off and then squeeze it out. And you can see how much glue I've got there. And on some of those frames, it's only three millimeters wide. So you really have to take your time to get that bead of epoxy right down the middle of it. Otherwise you make a huge mess. And then it's as simple as laying down the deck and you can see how I'm slowly easing that down. And of course, before I put this down, I pre-cut it, I measured it, um, and I made sure it was exactly the right size. And next, I'm putting on my weights here. So I had this pre-organized before I met up my glue. I knew exactly where my weights and clamps were gonna go. That way, I wasn't rushing around once the glue was mixed and my deck was down, thinking, how am I gonna hold this in position? It was already pre-planned, pre-meditated, and that way it gives me the greatest chance of success. And here you see me using a very thin wedge with a very fine point to wipe away all the excess squeeze out epoxy. And I'm, I'm actually, when I see squeeze out epoxy, I know I've got a good amount of epoxy, but not too much. So that makes me really happy when I see that. And it's super easy to clean whilst it's fresh, as you can see there. I also cut a 9mm wedge and glued it in position as a backing plate for a future hard point in the bow of the SUP. So as you can see behind me, the garage is a huge mess at the moment, so I've got the boys helping me. I'm going to get stuck into that before I do anything else because they just can't work like that. So uh, here comes the time lapse. better than what it was. And I've now got a designated epoxy mixing station over here in the corner, which is great too. Okay, so the deck is glued on, the workshop is clean, it is now time to start thinking about the foredeck. And the original plan isn't going to work. And that was to have this curved bulkhead here uh, with some 3 millimeter plywood running all the way around the perimeter, glued down. Um, and that was going to work well on this curve, but not the curve here on the bow. It's just going to be too tight, wasn't going to work. I even snapped a piece of plywood trying to put it in position, so uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. But I have a couple of other ideas, so let me show you what I'm thinking. So this was the original plan, bulkhead in here, and then a raised curved forward section of the deck, uh, marrying up to this curve here and going all the way around to the outside. Not gonna work, this curve here is just way too tight for such a narrow piece of plywood. So options, here's what I've come up with. So option A, option B, uh, they still have a bulkhead on each, there's still a ridge line on both. But um, just some aesthetic differences. You know, they both are going to have bungees there for, for stowing, you know, maps, whatever, um, spare paddles and stuff. But this one here, the, the two deck pieces come to a flat edge here on this triangular um, bulkhead, and they don't go beyond the bulkhead, and they, they finish right here at each corner. Um, and that'll work fine, no problem there. The alternative is to take these two flat pieces, add a very slight curve to the bulkhead in here. So maybe a, you know, a rise of, I don't know, 10 millimeters or so either side, just to give it a little bit of curve, and then carry these planks 
further beyond this point here, under here, and then add a, a curve to it either side. And that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I think it's going to look a lot better than just this, you know, very angular style here. This is going to be a bit, um, a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So can you hear what you guys think? I should have done, because hopefully by the end of this video, I've actually done that and I'm glued in position. But can you hear what you guys think that I should have gone with anyway? But uh, yeah, I think option B is gonna be the one for me. And by the way, what do you think of my sketches? Not too bad, hey? I've also got to think about steerage, so how I'm gonna install my rudder. I bought an off-the-shelf 600 millimeter long rudder which has an 85 millimeter long pin, and that needs to go into a receiver, obviously at the stern of the SUP. Otherwise, if I don't have steerage, the boat and SUP's gonna go all over the place. So um, let's jump down, look at the stern, and talk through some ideas. So the kayak itself has a, has a pin, which is 85 millimeters long, and that needs to go through a vertical hole in the stern of the SUP. Now, I've got two options. I can either cut this open, and then I can rebuild this whole structure to include a hole in this area. So that means we're gonna be cutting off flat, and then adding something on here and then going from there. Or I can take a block like this, which I've just shaped very quickly, and I can glue it on here and then probably put some epoxy fillets either side and then wrap some fiberglass around it. Uh, and that's got a really wide gluing surface here. And I can drill a hole oversize through here, which I would then fill with epoxy and then re-drill so that that hole is sealed. And then there's my rudder attachment. I think. I like the simplest form first. And I don't think it's gonna to look too bad either. Because I do want things to look good. I don't want things to look like they've just been thrown together. I want things to look good, needs to function really well, but needs to be simple and light. I mean, and that they're putting that at the end of the, the sup, it's, it's not very heavy, it's pine, um, but plenty strong enough, I would imagine, I think. And to be honest, if I do break it, I can just repair it and fix it. I'd rather, particularly on, elements of the SUP that are accessible on the outside. I'd rather build light and then break things and then fix it and make it stronger than overbuild it and add more weight and complexity than necessary. So this is what I think I'm gonna go with. Okay, so I wanna see how this looks. So I've got some double-sided tape, which I'm just gonna stick on the back here. All right, so double-sided tape, fill those bits off. So it's time to mount the bulkhead on the foredeck and I'm putting glue on the mast support and on the underside of the bulkhead on that deck replacement panel and I'll just be using some clamps to hold that in position whilst that sets. As always the best time to clean up any extra epoxy is right there and then and I'm also creating a fillet in between the bulkhead and the deck make sure it's a nice clean join there and then any excess epoxy I'm cleaning up as I go. I'm seeing a in the hole in my rudder post which I'll then fill with thick epoxy so I can seal that timber before I drill another hole. So before I glue any tricky parts of epoxy, I like to do a test fit of the panels and also a test of how I'm going to use my weights to hold all the, uh, the edges down. So looking under there, really close fit all the way through. So I think we're ready to mix up, mix up the epoxy now. All right, so that's it for this episode. As you can see, the garage didn't stay clean for very long, but anybody who's got kids and has trying to make a project work in their garage knows that you've got limited time. So you get in there, you get as much done as you can, you probably create a huge mess, and then you deal with it later. So that's where I'm kind of up to with the SUP at the moment. Um, good news is my kayak rudder has arrived. So it didn't make it into this episode, but in the next episode, we'll be installing the rudder talking about the rudder rigging and the rigging for the mainsail, so that is the furling line and the sheet line, uh, and then painting the deck 
and getting it so close to being able to launch. So uh, make sure you check into that next episode. And a huge thanks to everyone who's been watching my videos and subscribing. Don't forget the plans to this SUP are free. Just uh, send me an email, aaron.sup.plans at gmail.com and you'll get an auto reply with the plan so you can build the same SUP at home. But until then, thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.